Hey, I'm Rob Grimm, and I want to take a little bit of your time today to talk about Nanlite and how I use it with Nanlink, which is their app to control the lights. So if you know my work, you know that I've traditionally done a lot of stills using strobe. In the last several years, I've moved kind of away from that as I do more and more motion, which have kind of kicked strobe to the curb a little bit in favor of continuous light. I selected Nanlite, which I really love. It's incredibly versatile, and there's so many different types of modifiers that I can use with the Nanlite. But in recent months, I've really decided to kind of put the NAND Link app into play, and it's changed my workflow. So first and foremost, what I like about it is that once my lights are set, I don't have to mess with the lights. It always gets a little bit dicey if you have to go up and touch a light and change the power output or change the color. When I can do it all from the app, I know that everything is exactly where I left it, which for me is really important because my sets are really tight. The lighting is really kind of crafted. And I don't want to have to move my light in order to change a setting on it. The app is fabulous for it. The other thing that I really like about it is I can name each light and I know exactly which light I need to make the adjustment on. That's a wonderful feature that you'll find inside the Nanlink and I'm going to walk you through that. Now in that, one of the things you have to keep in mind is that in order to talk to the Nanlink, you have to be on Bluetooth. So not everything can be on channel one, which is how it is when it comes right out of the box. So I'm going to walk you through how to set them up. I have several different types of NAND lights. I've got the 60Cs, the 300Bs, as well as the 720Bs. They all talk to the Nanlink, but I want them all to be a little bit different in terms of where I place them on the spectrum of Bluetooth. So I'm going to show you how to set up the lights. I've kind of developed this little system that allows for me to add new lights in as I get them if I kind of grow my system, but it also differentiates between the different types of lights. So why don't we walk on over to the desk. I'm just going to pull a 60C and show you exactly how to get that channel set up. Then we can walk around the set and put together the bigger lights. So I'm just going to power this on. And as you can see, it comes up under channel one. So I'm going to hit the mode button. And there's my channel selector, and I can just change that dial. I'm going to put that on channel 5, and I'll be ready to go. Let me show you how the menu system works on the 720 and 300Bs. They're different from the 60Cs for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit menu button. I hit that, and it gives me address DMX. And I'm going to tap in on the button on the right. I'm going to do it twice. You can see that it's on 1. Now, if I were to go backwards, you can see that it has 512 different addresses. You can have an enormous amount of light on this system. But for my system, I'm putting my 300 Bs in the 30 range. So I'm just going to go right up to 30, tap that button in, it's set, and I can hit my CCT button, and it takes me back to the main menu. So now that I've got everything on individual addresses, I'm ready to import all of these lights into the NAND link and set up a session. I have three main different types of NAND lights. I've got my 60Cs, the 300Bs, and the 720Bs. So in order to give everything a different address for the Bluetooth, I've decided that I'm going to compartmentalize it. So my 60Cs go on 5. So it goes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. My 300Bs, I put it 30, and I'm going 30, 35, 40, and on up. So that gives me room with my 300Bs. And then with my 720s, I've decided to go 50, 55, and on up. It's just a way for me to kind of compartmentalize, know that I've got a specific area to put each type of light. They can speak to the NAND link via Bluetooth that way. And as I grow my system and when I want to put in more lights, I can easily kind of slot those in to the additional numbers that are in between. Now that we have a different address, a unique address for each light, and we've got the Bluetooth ready to go, we can go ahead and open up the NAND link app. We can put together a new session, and we can get this shoot underway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit New Scene, and I'm going to give this a title, and let's just call it Port Image, because we're doing a portfolio shot. I hit Done, and then I hit Create. Now that I have this window up, I can tap it, and it's going to say Connecting Fixtures. I hit the plus button. I've got a couple options here. I can go via Bluetooth or via the 2.4G. I'm going via the Bluetooth, as I've already set up. And here I've got my lights that are now dropping in, right? So what's what? Let's go ahead and figure this out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of these lights. And now I'm going to hit Done. And it's going to set up those fixtures into this scene. This can take a couple minutes for all of the different lights to drop into the system. 
So now that all the lights have populated into the app, I can go about the business of organizing them and then actually working with them. So the first thing that I want to do is rename them because right now they're just coming in as the lights themselves, right? Four is a 60, 300. That doesn't really help me. I do want to keep some of that information, but I'm going to rename them. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start at the very bottom and I'm going to hit rename. Okay. I'm going to get rid of Forza because they're all Forzas. I'm going to keep the 720 and I'm going to label this left strip because I know it's a strip light. Okay. And that renames it. So now it's showing up as 720B and it's the left side strip. And I'm going to go through and wind up doing them all. So let's rename them all. We're going to keep 300. And this is our right side. So we'll call it right strip. And you can see here, it's not taking all of it because I don't have enough room. So let's get rid of the two on the 300. We don't need that. And then we'll add strip. Okay, now we hit rename. So now it comes to the part where I don't know which light is which, but we can hit the little light bulb here and turn them on and off, which is super helpful. So I'm going to start at the very top. I'm going to turn that light on and that's my main front light. So I'm going to rename it. I'm going to get rid of the Forza part and I'm going to call it main front. Hit rename. Now I'm going to turn that light off. My next light. That's my topper. So let's go ahead and rename that. It takes just a couple minutes to get this done, but it's super helpful. And then I know this last one is going to be my left side light. I'm going to call this left spot. Done. Rename. Okay, so now that all of the lights have been renamed, it's going to be really easy for me to organize all this. Now, clearly, we had established this set a little bit earlier and then kind of wiped everything out so we could film this for you, right? So the lights have come up and they're not going to be in the same place at all. I want to go ahead and get them back to that. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. So as I go in, I can look at each individual light and I can see its power level. 50% is going to be way, way, way too hot. So I'm going to bring this down my top light and it's great because I know right where every light is. I can just go ahead and bring it down. My left spot. You know what? This one I'm actually going to turn off right now. I'm not sure where I want that light exactly. I haven't finessed it. So I'm just going to keep it off for now and I'm going to go ahead and start to take a couple shots as I look through the rest of these. 12%, that's probably pretty good. And six, that's nice and good too. So. The strip lights on either side are going to give me really nice highlights going along the bottle and I want to accent those flutes, right? That's why I'm using that strip bank in order to get that long thin line and I'm feathering it off. So it's not pointing right at the bottle, it's kind of actually pointing straight at the camera. So I'm just kind of catching the edge of those lights. Then my other ones are, are really and truly just using the small reflector that comes with the NAND light and I'm just kind of giving some specular light. First of all, I want it to kind of wash on the label and come around and give me some nice highlight. That top light, I want to kind of push down above to light the rims of the cocktails, the top of the bottle, as well as some of the shoulder. I want the other things on the set, including the tray, that mirrored tray, to have some light coming from above kind of pushing down. So that's what that top light is going to give me. Then finally, that left spot, I'm skimming that light kind of from underneath because I don't want to affect the background and I really don't want to affect the label too much. What I do want to do is introduce color, and I'd love it if that front mirror could start to mimic some of the background. Here's where the 60C is a really beautiful thing, because I can pretty much have an infinite color choice. So I'm going to go into the Nan Link app. I'm going to select left spot, and I'm going to change this from my CCT mode to my HSI mode. And this allows me to actually use the camera to select the color that I want. So I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to pick up that kind of teal. I'm going to hit done. And now it's made that selection. You can see it here in this bar. I've also got the ability to change the hue and I can change the saturation. Right now it's all the way up. Let's actually take a quick shot and see what it looks like all the way up. Let's see if it gives us some wash down here. Yeah, you can see it's just kind of highlighting. It's a little strong. I just want a little bit of that highlight, right, just to kind of pick up. But I'm going to pull that saturation down. Let's go to 76% because I don't want those highlights that I'm getting of color to be so crazy saturated. Now, let's say I don't like that color. Let's say I want to actually pick up maybe some of the warmth. I can do that really easily. I can change that color, hit done. Let's take another capture and see what that looks like. 
Okay. That's not too bad either. I do think I like the blue better. That kind of teal color was just nicer. So again, I'm going to use my camera. But what if I want to take it on the set? Okay. Let's try that out. And I'm going to select right there. Nice. I think I like that color even better. To me, this just gives me the ability to really fine tune different aspects of my set. Without having to go to the light, I don't have to change it, touch it, move it, mess with the quality of the light whatsoever. I can actually control all the settings right from the NAND link. So I want to do the same thing with the topper. I want that light to change as well. I want to pick up the color of the bottle. So let me go into that light. I'm going to hit top light. And again, I'm going to go from CCT mode to HSI mode. I'm going to use my camera, and I'm going to go to the bottle itself. And I want to pick up that really deep blue that's in the bottle. So I hit done. Now my light, you can see on the set, you can see in the reflector that it's really changed. It's picking up that blue. We're going to see a big change here in the back, particularly on that cocktail. You can see how it's definitely had an effect on the bottle. It's kind of deepened everything, and it's changed the highlights. Like, look here in this area. The highlight, which is really kind of teal right now, before it was kind of that bright yellow. And the truth of the matter is, I kind of like both. I like the bottle a little bit bluer. It's nicer. But I think I like the highlights to be a little bit more on the warm side on the cocktail. So I can blend those two together and have something really nice. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight on how I'm using the Nanlink app. It's really kind of made my workflow much more efficient, particularly if I'm working on a portfolio shot or just being a one-man band for the day. I've got the ability to set my lights, kind of have them where I need them. I can make adjustments to the power output or the color temperature without having to touch them. And they can be critical. I don't want to necessarily move my lights again once I have them in the right spot. So, I hope that you find ways to use the NAND link in your workflow because it's really helped me. And now that I've got this kind of moving in the right direction, I can go back and finish off this particular image by putting in my garnishes and fine-tuning the light.